Hello, everyone. IMS welcomes you all to Future You Set Your Career Compass Right with Experts Insight. And I am Kalyani Majumda, your host for today's webinar. So today, in the second part of the Careers in Operations session, we will be focusing on opportunities in e-commerce supply chain management with our speaker, Vaibhav Gupta, Product Manager, Ola. Vaibhav has completed his MBA from NITI. Uh, prior to his job with Ola, he has worked with Flipkart as Senior Business Analyst in Supply Chain, wherein he played an important role in designing supply chain for Flipkart's grocery business. Vaibhav is highly consumer focused with a strong understanding of logistics, supply chain, conversion funnel optimization, and analytics. A uh, lot of jargon there. So uh, let's see uh, what are we going to be covering in this session. So we are going to be covering um, the roles and responsibilities of a supply chain professional in the e-commerce sector, job opportunities available, skill sets required to excel, and many more such questions pertaining to e-commerce. Thank you, Vaibhav Gupta, for joining us today on this webinar. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, let's start from your career trajectory, right from NITI to deciding to make a career in e-commerce supply chain management. Sure, sure. Hey, good morning, everyone. Hi, Kalyani. Thanks for this opportunity. Thank you, everyone, for joining this. So I completed my engineering in like 2014 in computer science domain. And then uh, like I joined Mu Sigma. I worked with Mu Sigma for around one and a half years. Uh, there I got like a very good understanding, very good experience in analytics, working for some of the like Fortune 500 companies, like big, big shots, like Coca-Cola, AIG, et cetera, solving their data related business problems. So that gave me a good understanding of data analytics as well as de uh, decision science, like modeling and everything. Uh, post that I decided to move and uh, do my MBA from NITI Mumbai. And uh, there at NITI Mumbai, again, I got a lot of learning about like supply chain management in both like traditional companies, big FMCGs, as well as in e-commerce. Uh, then uh, there itself, like I got to work with Unilever also for a small listing, like uh, for a winter project, I worked with Unilever on their like a uh, sales prediction model and everything. From there, then I got uh, placed at Flipkart. So like I chose Flipkart actually, like because I was always fascinated with this like very big scale as well as very fast delivery. So uh, uh, that motivated and again, like uh, uh, having a uh, uh, background in analytics and now with NITI, I got very good understanding of supply chain. So I worked into, I moved to this uh, supply chain analytics uh, domain actually in uh, Flipkart. Uh, there at Flipkart, like uh, they were just starting with the grocery business. So grocery is a very different and very uh, like hard problem to crack. Uh, in supply chain terms if we talk. So I got chance to work in supply chain uh, like management for overall gro grocery business. I led the team for analytics team for it. We worked on several uh, problems related to supply chain like last mile, first mile, uh, fulfillment, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> uh, then from there like uh, after working for around like one, one and a half years, uh, I got uh, interested in product management and then I moved to Ola to get into like product. Here at Ola, again, like I'm working on various customer centric problems, like how to improve the overall uh, app experience for customer for different use cases, like change destination or like uh, you, uh, you want any ride insurance or uh, like uh, you want to uh, have faster allocation, et cetera. Like, a uh, lot of uh, problems, both on customer side, side as well as supply side. Okay. So that's okay. a brief introduction. Right. Yeah. So uh, since you're talking about uh, supply chain, so what is the role of supply chain in e-commerce? So like if you talk about e-commerce business, so supply chain plays a very, very crucial role. So uh, if you talk about e-commerce, like there are mainly three pillars to supply uh, to e-commerce. Like one is your pricing like uh, deep discounting then second is your convenience and third is your selection so uh, you can uh, do pricing by very good like a lot of money and a lot of discounting also you can have a lot of selection but for convenience for convenience that is like biggest pillar of e-commerce you need a very strong supply chain management by convenience i mean like uh, you are ordering and you want to get the uh, item next day 
or uh, in within two days. So how we build this type of convenience with a very high reliability? So if we are, we firstly we should be able to promise you two day delivery or one day delivery. And again, like how we are able to uh, uh, meet your expectation of one day or two day delivery. So overall, that convenience expect comes through supply chain. So that is why like supply chain is a like one of the key pillars for overall e-commerce business. So since you were already talking about uh, Flipkart, so uh, before Ola, since you were working with Flipkart as a senior business analyst in supply chain, tell us about your role a bit more in detail. Sure. Yeah. So at Flipkart, like as I told, uh, like I was working for grocery business. So a grocery, like it was an SM business. And so I was working uh, initially on the like a uh, fulfillment side. So how to improve your uh, uh, like, so one of the key metrics, if I talk about for a grocery business is your field rate. So basically how grocery is different from your normal e-commerce is like in grocery, your uh, like average a number of items per order will be like around 13 to 15. So, and in normal e-commerce, it will be like one item or two items you will order together. So now managing those 13 to 15 items, and uh, we call it as a fill rate. So basically how many items you are uh, like uh, delivering to the customer out of those 15 orders. So in general, like it, that number should be on a, like over at a high level, it should be like above 99, 99.5%. So how to maintain that fill rate that comes from fulfillment optimization. Like how is your FC designed and how, what we, you can improve in the FC how you are placing the inventory, how effectively your pickers are picking the items for customer orders. So I worked on like overall FC revenue charter where uh, we worked on multiple pieces like inventory placement, picking efficiency, etc. Then as well as I worked on like uh, slot optimization. So like in grocery there are, uh, it's not like, uh, like you can give two day or three day slot you uh, need to give like uh, second day slot or one uh, like next day delivery mostly. So in next day delivery, there are like four slots of like two hours, three hours, etc. So how to optimize the slot fulfillment? Because like afternoon slots were very less underutilized and like morning and even late evening slots were fully utilized. So overall, like uh, my role was how to bring efficiency, like how to reduce cost as well as how to uh, bring better customer experience. Yeah. Uh, how e-commerce is changing logistics? So uh, basically, if we talk about e-commerce, like as I talked, a uh, convenience and then in convenience, like your faster delivery, hmm. faster as well as reliable delivery. Hmm. So it's not just uh, today, I, uh, like I order, you ordered five times on Flipkart and uh, some uh, like every time I told you, like I will deliver in one day. But uh, out of five times, only two times I delivered in one day, uh, three times I delivered in two days or three days. Right. So that reliability expect was missing from logistics part. Now these e-commerce companies have brought that uh, like uh, reliability mm -hmm. as a whole into the system of overall like logistics. Mm -hmm. Also like uh, uh, they are working at a very large scale. So at large scale, you have different type of problems as well as different type of like uh, uh, challenges from um, from overall space utilization, then uh, finding uh, uh, real estate across cities right. in different cities. So although so definitely like e-commerce is changing logistic in a big way. Right, right. So uh, since you were talking about you know how e-commerce is changing logistics now is. Uh, what is the, um, how has e-commerce changed the balance between business giants and consumers as in the brands and the companies, the products and consumers? Tell us from a supply chain aspect. Yeah. So uh, basically, uh, so previously, if you talk, so uh, they were uh, like, uh, there was not uh, uh, like a supply chain prediction thing. Mm -hmm. Like whatever, like, uh, uh, like we can say uh, uh, demand planning or demand prediction was very uh, low uh, like low on a very low aspect for big business giants. Okay. Now with supply chain, now with a uh, building of like very efficient supply chain and uh, prediction algorithms and also like demand planning, supply planning. Now they have that uh, capability to understand and to uh, build or like to produce items in uh, with a full view of like consumer uh, 
necessity across the year or across the months to come mm-hmm. so that was a big uh, change and also like uh, uh, if we talk about uh, like uh, pr- from a prediction point only now they have uh, they need to keep less inventory across different like uh, different ha- stops uh, in the overall supply chain right. okay. so previously like uh, in a store like if we talk about any like big uh, suppose fashion uh, giant Mm-hmm. so in fashion like they were keeping lot of inventory because demand planning was not there now uh, they can put uh, they can have a small inventory so uh, effectively their working capital and everything will reduce right right, right. so that changed the, a lot in overall logistics and supply chain function okay so uh, there is, let's take one question from our attendees uh, what does a typical day in your life look like what are the specific tasks you do so this is basically i think now with ola yeah yeah from a supply so, chain aspect of course yeah. sure sure so at ola like as a product manager so i'm working as a product manager right. so main uh, like uh, like product manager has uh, like main key expect is to understand customer problems right now Uh, for understanding customer problems you need to do a lot of analytics like you uh, if uh, you have a team of analysts then also like you need to have a very good grasp of data hmm. and how to read metrics how to read numbers right. and then understand like where like if we talk about like funnel so like on to- like people are coming uh, people are opening your app but they are not booking a ride on your app so why they are not booking at which which places they are dropping off and then once you have that understanding then how you can improve that process like how or how you can simplify that thing for customer or users mm-hmm. or how you to uh, so for simplifying the process you need some new features right or what the customer is demanding or what the competitor is doing so in an overall point of view like you need to b- build some features or you make some changes on your app mm-hmm. so uh, like uh, as a product manager like uh, you need to identify features and then you need to do a deep dive about what should the feature look like whom to roll it out then what metrics you will see like initially during analysis you will see like what will be the impact and like once that feature is built what metrics you will uh, you will track and how you will see whether it is working or not right so then like uh, once you decide about a feature you will deep dive about the feature impact on various other uh, aspects and then imp- uh, impact analysis everything Right. then you work with your uh, development team like software developers and uh, overall engineering team right about how to build coordination between different teams engineering teams and mm-hmm. then you get the uh, like feature build mm-hmm. and then rolling out that feature to a particular like ab testing again analytics so right. <laughs> analytics is mm-hmm. always very important everywhere either, either you are working in a supply chain management or as a supply chain manager or a product manager or right. like in any other domain mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so ab testing experimentation right. all those things so in a day like the day uh, is distributed across all these tasks like meetings with engineering meetings with business folks meetings with design team etc etc mm-hmm. so uh, so is is the e-commerce supply chain management similar across all e-commerce businesses or does it vary from one to the other so it varies a lot so mm-hmm. like it varies a lot from uh, from product to product mm-hmm. so as i was discussing like even in flipkart also like there were like three to four different uh, totally different supply chains correct so one was like grocery which was having like one, one day two day um, kind of eta then mm-hmm. there was non large business so non large is like your regular fashion and right. other house stuff etc mm-hmm. then you have fun like large supply chain like mm-hmm. the furniture tv washing machine etc right. right so if you talk about like uh, because of the size of items because of the requirement of customer like how, like for a tv you can still wait for 3 days time or a weeks time Right. but for food like for your uh, like staples and all you want uh, very fast delivery mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so because and then again like uh, there are like other uh, items like gems and jewelry suppose right. tomorrow e-commerce enters into like uh, a gems and jewelry business so again like each product or each like domain have different challenges and therefore we need different kind of supply chains to meet the customer expectation as well as our uh, like inside metrics right right 
so, so uh, you definitely like there are uh, like a uh, lot of changes across different uh, supply chains for different businesses so uh, what kind of career progression one should expect from entry level to senior levels in e-commerce supply chain management so uh, basically if i talk about like e-commerce like flipkart and amazon so uh, like they have like uh, uh, if I, and also from like a big uh, like premier b schools of india so they hire at a like program manager or uh, like a uh, uh, assistant manager or manager level we can say right at a high level like they uh, they hire at a manager level then as a progression like uh, from a uh, like from manager you grow to senior manager then associate director director right. and right. as senior director level mm-hmm. that is like just from a de- designation point of view but if i talk about like different functions so right. there are like major functions like design is there supply chain design mm-hmm. so what i was talking about like how how to design the fulfillment center right or where to put your fulfillment center like now there is a uh, like uh, uh, like bangalore city in bangalore city you want to put two fulfillment centers mm-hmm. so where to put those fulfillment center how, like what should be the design uh, all those things are there okay. so uh, in that particular aspect supply chain design team plays mm-hmm. a crucial role then we have like operations team which uh, manages the day to day operations and then we have like control tower mm-hmm. so control tower teams do real time analytics like whether uh, in real time like if vehicles or if uh, laborers in the fulfillment center or on ground are facing an issue okay so, uh, like during this period suppose even if like you are getting hired at uh, as uh, as an operations manager so you will definitely grow or want to get into like the design team or you want to get into analytics right. from there like you will get better understanding of, from technology point of view okay then you can again grow as a product manager where like you will go get those things whatever you design you will get those things implemented with engineers mm-hmm. so there are a lot and lot of uh, like uh, ways to grow and different functions to grow mm-hmm. So, uh, what is the difference between a product manager and supply chain manager? There's a question from uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, basically, uh, uh, like supply uh, uh, supply chain manager, if we talk about so supply chain managers, uh, uh, like key their key metric is to bring efficiency, hmm. like efficiency in the system. So, basically, reduce cost. Right. Okay. so if we talk about like high level metrics so like reducing cost is one of the key, like bringing efficiency into the system is one of the key metrics for supply chain whereas if we talk about product manager so for a product manager like key aspect is to bringing like uh, enhancing the experience of the customer right so uh, now if i talk about product manager so it's not that for a product manager uh, the customers are always the end user like okay. even if so in sub, uh, in like supply chain at flipkart like people uh, are like uh, there are product managers for uh, like internal uh, user uh, like internal platforms also mm-hmm. so suppose for uh, like there are delivery agents so, so we have uh, uh, like mobile app for delivery agents also so how to improve de- delivery agents uh, experience on that app correct okay. so definitely like for a product manager key metric is enhancing the experience mm-hmm. for the users for the uh, for the agents who are is uh, using your product mm. and for a supply chain manager it is more from like efficiency in the system okay okay uh, there's a let's take another question uh, as a student are we expected to have a certain level of knowledge about analytics before being uh, recruited or are we supposed to learn depending on the product or service we will be working on so uh, definitely so i would say uh, if uh, like from an analytics point of view you don't need to know about like hifi uh, like modeling stuff and all Correct. but you should know about excel like at, at least ms excel you should be like very familiar with or uh, like you should know about like how to uh, put v lookup or pivot function pivot pivot tables and all those things so it makes your life easy as soon as you enter uh, into any company okay uh, and uh, like uh, once you have like this uh, capability like working knowledge of excel then you can think of r or other softwares but uh, even though those are not required before joining like uh, by, before 
getting into any interviews uh, if you get good knowledge of excel then it's a, a really good point okay okay uh let's take another question uh, so what are the skills generally required to get into uh, supply chain management so yeah. one is like uh, one important skill is like analytics analytics then the knowledge or vision of uh, like market dynamics Correct. how you see the market trends how what you uh, what vision you have. so suppose like today uh, there is like on an average delivery in 7 days hmm. so what do you think like if you uh, you uh, you see ki customers want uh, orders in 2 days or 3 days hmm. so that kind of vision then uh, uh, like good understanding of like overall uh, like different um uh, delivery uh, like delivery patterns and de uh, delivery models hmm. like hmm. how uh, how we can uh, put a supply chain like fc to mother hub or to a delivery uh, hub or how we can change it okay. again so these are some of the aspect then one of the very crucial aspect will be like uh, uh, communication skills right in a supply chain job Uh, like there are chances you to like on the same day you may communicate with a uh, like a delivery agent or a like a picker or a placer in a, a warehouse and on the same day you may also interact with your ceo so okay. for uh, like uh, for uh, for sharing some business case or some improvement areas okay so i uh, like uh, and also like when you are managing a very different uh, level of employees Uh, you need to have very good communication skills to bring the repo with them and also to get the work done okay so communication plays a very crucial role in uh, like it plays a more crucial role in supply chain compared to other uh, domains okay. mm -hmm. so um, how to build your profile to excel in this field any tips like maybe three or four points pointers so uh, one is like as i said like uh, and uh, you should learn about analytics Mm -hmm. like uh, basic analytics then you should know about the market trends like how is how are uh, e how uh, overall e-commerce sector is doing mm -hmm. what improvements you can bring then uh, your basics of supply chain like a conceptual understanding of supply chain like uh, different models and everything uh, supply chain models supply chain uh, designs etc uh, and then like uh, communication as Uh, right. is required yeah. in every domain in every field right. yeah yeah so uh if uh, there is a question if one is more inclined towards it but considering scope which is better it or e-commerce supply chain uh so it is everywhere <laughs> yeah. so if we talk like it as in uh, like even whatever pro uh, product managers are getting built they are doing through uh, like i it in like it team or like developers and all mm -hmm. and also like there are specific profiles if we talk about with fmcg companies like unilever pngs uh, they have like it in supply chain management mm -hmm. so these people build softwares for their like uh, supply chain management so there you get a chance to work on like both it aspects as well as supply chain aspect okay, okay. so you can like um, aspire for getting into a roles like it manager in uh, at unilever pngs okay. mm -hmm. even uh, merico okay. uh, all these companies itc all these companies big uh, big fmcgs companies have this kind of roles mm -hmm. uh there's another question i am an industrial and production engineering student which mba should i go for uh so if i talk about like uh, since i have completed my mba from miti and like uh, it's a very good institute for like uh, building further your like enhancing your concepts and building more on your industrial and production engineering point uh, but anyways like uh, since uh, if you want to become a techno manager like uh, if you want to get into supply chain management operations or you are fascinated by all these concepts do a track change or career uh, like career, uh, domain change post mba mm -hmm. then uh, you need to take a call from not i mean uh, your industrial engineering degree should not play a very big role in your decision making mm -hmm. okay uh, is there a lot of pressure considering that everything is required to be quick as a if you are in supply chain in e commerce 
so uh, uh, there is pressure uh, in uh, every job and in yeah. at every level right. but definitely it's not uh, like uh, so there are different teams managing different aspects of the overall supply chain so mm. if you are working in a design like supply chain design aspect definitely you get a lot of time to manage things mm. uh, because like uh, you will get a lot of time to think deep and uh, build things correct uh, on operations front definitely since like uh, it's a real time thing real time operations are going on so many times there is high pressure right right so uh, if someone has been working in supply chain management is it easy to shift domain and even the other way around like if somebody is working in some other field and would like to shift domain and uh, say e-commerce supply chain management uh, is it easy to shift domain if is it like a smooth transition uh, do you think a candidate can uh, of course you know you have uh, your transition from supply chain role to a product management role but of course you know still you are looking after analytics and everything so uh, is there a smooth transition uh, and say from someone who is in supply chain and would like to get into marketing or some other field see uh, so it yeah. depends on like the role expectation and right. the level of role you want to get into uh -huh. so uh, definitely if somebody started his career in marketing like uh -huh. post mb he started his career in marketing uh -huh. now and you started your career in supply chain management uh -huh. after 5 years the opportunity is available to this first person who uh -huh. has like a 5 uh, years experience in marketing Oh. and the opportunity is available to you in marketing domain because you worked for 5 years in supply chain would be very different okay. so at that time like after 5 years or after 3 years uh, if you want to definitely get into marketing you may need to take uh, like uh, lesser notch like one notch or two notch less uh, ro uh, lower role uh -huh. but definitely it's not very tough to uh, like transition from one uh, like one sector or one domain to other domain but uh, the thing is but in supply chain you also need to know a lot about analytics and you need to understand logistics and all right so so then how do you uh, so if someone is in another field and would like to get into supply chain management how does that happen isn't that difficult is it a smooth transition so again like uh, so if i talk about the soft skills or like tech like analytical skills yeah. so those are required in across domains now okay even if uh, like you are a marketing guy or you are a finance guy or you are a supply chain guy mm -hmm. wherever you are working like, like your excel skills your communication skills are playing a big role okay now talking about some like uh, hard skills or like understanding of like e-commerce or operations so definitely uh, you you would require a good time to understand those concepts and definitely the uh, like it depends on demand supply also like uh, in which companies you are targeting how many people are aspiring to get into that company in that particular role uh, so all those things play a role in like uh, deciding whether you will be able to transition into supply chain uh, okay. from marketing or from marketing to supply chain or not okay okay um uh, so we all know with covid-19 and with the lockdown e-commerce has taken another has gone to another level uh, yeah. and everybody is talking about e-commerce so um tell us about uh, the challenges and the opportunities that covid-19 has created in this field in e-commerce and supply chain management sure sure so uh, like if we talk about like from a orders point of view yeah. or from a like overall demand point of view uh -huh. so demand uh, went like uh, out of room <laughs> multiple times demand <laughs> increased like by uh, many fold yeah. so if uh, we talk about like any any e-commerce player like big basket or e uh, like flipkart amazon and also like in co during covid duration like demand increased more for like this grocery businesses oh. because like lockdown you won't get essential item you won't even uh, get essential items for few days and all so uh, there was like big challenge from overall like demand management point of view like how you are managing the demand so like if i give example about big basket so 
for uh, they, for a few weeks or few days they stopped like uh, 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 they stopped uh, creating new accounts or okay. like uh, <laughs> like yeah so only, yeah. they were serving only old users or uh, like uh, users who were already on the platform from a long time so in that way like during very high demand time you need to uh, do the right expectation management that's how you get a high reliability mm-hmm. so because like if you are getting lot of demand and you are unable to do a good uh, give a good reliability to any of those uh, users then it will hamper your overall operations mm-hmm. but at least you decide which users or which cohort you want to uh, like uh, add or give uh, uh, like deliver items right so that is one aspect from expectation management then how uh, like how de- uh, uh, resilient is your uh, overall supply chain to the external changes hmm. Hmm. and also like how quickly you can change to your, uh, to whatever like uh, ex- factors were there like uh, zones were created red zone orange zone right. and uh, like there were restrictions or entry restrictions hmm. also like how do you manage like uh, with government yeah. agencies right. go- uh, yeah. like uh gone because each state or each city have their own regulations their own bodies how you manage or how you uh, like go through with all the bureaucratic uh, uh level issues and everything mm-hmm. so it was a very challenging thing and also like from a supply chain point of view for supply chain managers it was a very good learning period for them like learning very real time like uh, all very new thing no, none of the uh, aspect was expected before <laughs> so it was a great learning period a tough period but yeah right it was good time yeah. uh there is a question being a mechanical engineer how much will it help if i choose to uh, how much will it help uh, if i choose to uh, do a supply chain management if i get into supply chain management see so from uh, like uh, it doesn't matter very much like where, in which domain you have uh, completed your engineering because like if i talk about neat like uh, so all the uh, uh, like uh, fmcgs or all the companies in india mm-hmm. at top level most of the people who are working are from neat most of them are neat, from neat and like in F, supply chain management whatever hiring is going on they are uh, like Uh, a good chunk of people go from niti okay. but at niti during my experience like it was uh, not uh, like whatever was your degree like uh, engineering stream hmm. it didn't uh, bother anyone or it didn't like uh, uh, change the way impacted the way you uh, ex- uh, you like excel within the institute or like after getting into jobs right, right. Hmm. um Okay, let's take another question. How the uh, e-commerce supply chain role, how this e-commerce supply chain role is different from manufacturing supply chain role? So, uh, like, uh, basically in manufacturing supply chain roles, uh, you are, uh, like, more working towards, like, production management or, like, vendor relationship, like, procurement, production, all those aspects. Mm-hmm. So, it is more... Uh, like uh, there your communication skills are more required because suppose you are doing like procurement you are heading uh, like working in procurement function hmm. so you need to work with all the vendor vendors and all and get things at the lowest price or at the most efficient uh, price point and uh, like whatever uh, uh, at the best contract hmm. for good for company so there like you need to do vendor relationship uh, for uh, from a like procurement point of view if you are working in a production environment like how to deal with ground level employees or mm-hmm. how to deal uh, with people to get the efficiency mm-hmm. and at the same time i like in uh, manufacturing if you are working on like production planning or like planning aspects mm-hmm. then uh, there could be like multiple unknown factors right. and all unknown factors as well as their it may not be that uh, sophisticated mm-hmm. so how to go through all those uh, processes and uh, like old software sort of old ways of doing mm. and also change management lot of impact on change management right. so all those things are there while in e-commerce it is more of like lot 
uh, you will get a finished product and how you get it delivered the fastest okay. and in the most reliable way okay okay so um is it beneficial uh, for for a career in e-commerce supply chain management is it beneficial uh, or is it a must that you should be from an from an engineering background uh yeah so uh, definitely uh means uh, beneficial yeah it benefits because like whatever in hmm. e-commerce you are doing we need to work more on efficiency aspect right so and like uh, uh, even like in supply chain also if uh, yeah, like you are designing things you are uh, uh, de- uh, like uh, uh, what we say uh, methodologies for like where, how picker will move inside a warehouse how uh, deliveries will be done how to uh, like where to put different uh, item inventory across the city so i i feel like uh, like engineer uh, like uh, doing engineering helps in supply chain management but it's not that people who are uh, like non engineers can't excel or can't get into supply chain management mm-hmm. so uh, like uh, there are a lot of new things and lot of things to uh, learn overall in, in supply chain or uh, means in every domain so it doesn't matter much uh, what was your like uh, uh, engineering stream okay any computer language required for analysis in e-commerce uh not particular computer language so most of the work is done on excel if you are good at excel then it's okay. well and good uh once you are good at uh, excel then uh, if you want to explore more uh, more and if you are in proper like uh, planning like some suppose demand planning or some uh, analytical functions in supply chain then you may uh, explore r or python uh, for statistical mm-hmm. like uh, uh, use cases so is uh, six sigma course prerequisite for supply chain or no uh, there is no such prerequisite of question. like six sigma <laughs> yeah okay okay um okay there is another question uh, how does geomart supply chain work we get the order mostly on the same day what unique uh, they are doing when than their competitors so uh, though it's not in public uh, very well for but it's still like what i understand from their overall supply chain and what is my uh, perception about it is like uh, it is more of a hyper local delivery okay so uh, they are tying up with the kirana stores across cities Mm-hmm. and now uh, since you are tying up with kirana you can uh, deliver very fast from uh, your nearby kirana store while if we compare it with other like uh, grocery giants uh, like big basket or any other uh, like flipkart or amazon mm-hmm. so uh, they have started also started doing tie ups with kirana but still their supply chain is more uh, more or uh, like their own inventory they are selling and yeah. they are delivering okay so definitely it's a like uh, uh, all together a different model business model okay um so uh, there is another question does uh, niti has an edge over iams as far as supply chain management is concerned uh, <laughs> because people always think like operations supply chain niti <laughs> that's what the general uh, yeah thought is so definitely niti gives a very good exposure to supply chain management and operations hmm. they have very good faculty members and all, uh, in this particular domain also they have very strong alumni base for hmm. and like across all companies in india and also uh, abroad also for, and uh, like at uh, very good positions in supply chain management okay so this all gives a good learning experience and good uh, perspective on supply chain Right. but definitely like we can't compare like whether iams are good or nit is good hmm. so that depends on uh, like what uh, options you have how do you want to make your career do you want to be a generalist or a specialist and all those things hmm. but definitely we means ca- a comparison uh, just to uh, understand like whether sub- for supply chain you should go to nit or other iam that depends okay uh how does uh, a lot of management uh, okay 
like in e-commerce amazon asks customer when do they want to deliver when, when do they want to deliver what matrix decides these slots okay, it's a very technical question uh, basically you know how is the supply chain management working actually how is it operating uh, say for example in amazon so what matrix are they deciding these slots for so basically at a very high level it depends on the yeah. demand and supply so mm -hmm. how much supply you have how much inventory have you in your warehouses and like how much demand is coming if there is less demand so definitely you have more items to uh, like more items to fulfill this particular order mm -hmm. and then how reliable or uh, what's the demand pressure on your uh, overall supply chain if you have less orders to deliver you can give a uh, like faster slot to a particular customer. Okay. Uh, apart from e-commerce, what's the scope of supply chain management in pure logistics, uh, in companies that are purely into logistics? So uh, like there are a lot of companies, e-commerce is one of a prominent sector for SCM supply chain mm -hmm. management, but there are other companies like I talked previously. So all the traditional companies were mm -hmm. like manufacturing plants manufacturing companies all fmcg fmcgs then your logistics companies like revigo and all so there are lots and lots of companies where uh, you can get into after supply chain uh, like after studying or after doing mba in supply chain management uh, can you suggest uh, some good online courses to start with with the supply chain basics if someone would like to pursue supply chain and probably preparing for MBA and would like to probably get the basics of supply chain. Are there any good online courses for that? Uh, so, uh, even uh, you can... <laughs> Sorry? Is it even necessary? Yeah, that's the question by a student. Uh, uh, not necessary, like no, any particular certification you need to have to get into like uh, a college because like that works in a very different way your percentiles and right. selection process so they have their own selection process so i don't feel like if you are going to any iims or any uh, niti or any other B school and your uh, uh, certification in supply chain may impact uh, a lot like your impact of getting into a particular college a lot mm -hmm. so you should have a good uh, like understanding and knowledge that you can talk about, but particularly like a certificate or a bullet point about a certificate on the resume, I don't think it would make a get uh, like very big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share uh, some challenging situation that you faced at Ola and Flipkart and how did you find solutions to those challenges? Um, Maybe so one case or one case from Flipkart, one case probably from Ola. So uh, at Flipkart, like let's start with the uh, Flipkart. So yeah. at Flipkart, like for grocery, uh, like as a top side, I was working grocery and in grocery, particularly in this uh, fulfillment center optimization. Mm -hmm. So uh, initially, like since it was just uh, in a very nascent stage, so we used to keep inventory as it is like uh, inventory is coming, we are putting and then we are just picking up the inventory. So, uh, like, I, uh, I took this uh, overall, like, uh, responsibility of revamping this by, uh, re like, uh, putting a process or algorithm to how to put inventory. Because, like, I got a problem statement that how we need to improve the eff picking efficiency. Mm. So, now, uh, I thought about it, like, how to improve picking efficiency. It's a big warehouse, lot of items, like, grocery, uh, hell, lot of, SK, like, 5,000, 6,000 SKUs, and how to, uh, like, improve the efficiency. And it was not just, like, one you know, efficiency by 1 or 2 percent. We wanted it to be, like, 50, 60, or 100 percent improvement in efficiency. So, then... I thought like, why don't we think in a different way and how, uh, how to put the inventory first in a very efficient way, in an intelligent way, so that picking will be very easy. Mm -hmm. So then we entered into this like uh, uh, inventory placement project where like we 
design the overall placement algorithm like uh, initially starting from like bifurcating like food non food items then previously like uh, how to uh, build the pick list so like if a picker is coming and picking items so previously he was picking only for one order like 12 15 items for a particular order now how a single picker can pick multiple orders four five orders mm. uh, so like 50 60 items 70 items in a mm. single trip right uh, then uh, what should be the uh, height of shelves like where to put items whether on the top top shelves or yeah. lowest oh. shelf based on the like uh, fast moving slow moving items based on the dimensions or like uh, ex- uh, size uh, weight weight and size of the item right so this is all, like it was a very challenging project and uh, like basis all these factors hmm. uh, designing the overall algorithm right uh, that like that provided a good uh, a very good uh, like learning of supply chain and like very good visibility also across the earth hmm. Hmm. so that was a very one like really challenging situation okay. then at ola like yeah. at ola like when i entered ola so i was made responsible for like uh, uh, rolling out their new app so like ola ch- uh, made very big uh, like lot of changes in their consumer app mm. so i was responsible made responsible to roll out app and while rolling out like i observed like go we expected new like this new consumer app to uh, work in a very good way compared to the old app Hmm. like from a metrics point of view but like our metrics were really down okay so how to improve it like ah. uh, there were uh, not many aspects which we can change because we already optimized it overall we okay. overall changed the look and feel and now there were not many uh, many uh, improvement areas we can see okay. so uh, while looking into the data while ca- talk after talking to lot of customers drivers etc so we came to a point that uh, people are clicking on con- like people are confirming but then people are cancelling more compared to old old app okay so then uh, we are identified like uh, by, once people click on the confirm and while we are doing allocation hmm. uh, people are dropping off and then the challenge was how to uh, like how to make pe- make sure that people don't drop off after confirming Mm-hmm. so there like i came up with this feature of like allocation in progress so we will show up bar so what was the issue uh, like people uh, previously users were uh, users were not avail- uh, like aware of how much time they have spent mm-hmm. so uh, like they were under the perception that they have spent a lot of time and allocation is not happening mm-hmm. so that is why they were dropping off mm-hmm. now with this progress bar they will get a sense of progress or how much like a sense of time they have spent and also a sense of how much time is left for uh, allocation completion mm-hmm. so that helped a lot in improving the overall funnel so right. definitely like it was a good challenging situation or challenging problem uh, which we cracked mm. so uh, let's take some questions uh, what were the uh, what are the different inefficiencies or waste factors that you faced in supply chain and how would you reduce it to improve the cycle time both at ola and flipkart or you can just take flipkart yeah so at flipkart like uh, we observed that lot of in uh, and particularly in for these grocery items like you have oil oil packets and you have uh, uh, rice etc etc so there was lot of damage happening hmm. because of inefficient or like uh, 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 carelessness we can say or like uh, uh, within the warehouse okay so we came up with processes hmm. how to how to reduce this damage or pilferage from the uh, warehouse okay uh, so like that was one important aspect then also like the uh, miss shipment was an issue like uh like your supply chain bandwidth was uh, getting reduced if we ship like wrong a wrong order to a, a wrong customer hmm. yeah so uh, we also worked on, a lot on like improving that particular miss shipment right. factor hmm. Hmm. so uh tell me if there, uh, for a fresher 
would be interested in pursuing a career and grow in e-commerce supply chain management, where should they start from? Other than, uh, let's not talk about MBA, other than that, as in, okay, one has uh, already maybe completed MBA and one who has not completed an MBA is planning probably for an MBA, for both aspects. Where should they start from? So, uh, firstly, I would say you should have good market understanding Hmm. Like, uh, what ecom? So currently, suppose. Uh, so where should they start from? Like maybe a, maybe a particular role that will help them to understand all that, and then yeah. So maybe you you can just elaborate on that. Yeah. Hmm. So uh, initially, like they can start with. Uh, so suppose somebody is already working. Hmm. Suppose and a non MBA person uh, just after engineering he is working. So hmm. suppose he is working in a consulting company. Right. So in consulting now, if and if he want uh, he aspires to get into supply chain management, hmm. he can uh, uh, get some projects which are related to uh, supply chain or e-commerce or hmm. logistics as hmm. a whole. So in that way, like while working for some uh, project with some like client uh, for, on this uh, particular domain, he will get an understanding as well as he will get a point to discuss during his uh, like future interviews for MBA selection okay. or future roles in supply chain or e-commerce company. Okay. So that's a good way. Again, like if okay. he is working in an analytics company, like there again, he can aspire or he can uh, to get into a project which is more inclined towards supply chain hmm. so there he can get uh, knowledge about supply chain okay uh, um, can you can someone uh, from commerce background get into supply chain uh, e-commerce supply chain is it uh, yeah. very so even if like... they need to is it like they need to do some few extra probably some other courses as well on the side to, you know, get a foot in the, in this particular field. So if you are pursuing MBA, so from MBA, definitely like you can uh, enter into an e-commerce company okay. in supply chain role. Okay. So uh, means even if you are an e-commerce, uh, sorry, even if you are a commerce student, so it won't matter much during the selection process that you are a commerce student definitely you won't get admission into niti because niti has a rule of they only admit uh, this uh, like engineers so but definitely you can get into other iims or any and other in, other b schools in india or abroad hmm. and through mba then you can get into e-commerce right apart from that like e-commerce supply chain also like uh, even Flipkart and all the top companies, uh, Amazon and other companies, they have like business finance role. Oh. Uh, business finance as a big domain is there, which works for like overall, like uh, on the financial aspect of supply chain, like overall financial aspect and also within BizFin, okay. business finance, they have this supply chain oh. uh, also, like supply chain BizFin team. Okay. Okay. So, a uh, lot like I have worked with a lot of CS and all like hmm. who are purely commerce students CS and uh, they were working at Flipkart in like this BizFin function. Okay. So through that also you can that is also a way like without MBA uh, also you can get it through that path. Uh, okay, another question. I finished my undergrad in production engineering and will pursue my masters in supply chain and logistics next year. What do you suggest I should do in the meantime so as to enhance my skills and make me desirable to the recruiters? So, for supply chain, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, basically, you can, uh, you should uh, keep a tap on like what uh, 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 new improvements are going on on supply chain or uh, like from technological point of view in e-commerce in India or abroad. So. Uh, like understanding the change, demand pattern changes or supply uh, changes like uh, and how many in how many days people are delivering orders and everything like a good market understanding oh. uh, secondly you can uh, work on like some aspects of the like uh, analytic softwares and also understanding technologies like futuristic technologies so 
uh, even like uh, even now itself companies have started working on like futuristic techno uh, technologies like robotics okay so how you can like uh, pick items in a fulfillment centers using ro robots right and how you can do a better demand planning or a better supply planning so what algorithms you can use for a better uh, demand planning mm -hmm. so you can work on like majorly i would say like understanding industry like market dynamics is mm -hmm. one aspect so that you can talk about it during your interviews another thing is your analytical skills right uh, and uh, another is layer uh, your knowledge on technology like erp systems so lot of mm -hmm. like traditional companies work purely on e erps okay so on erp uh, erp and all like technological aspects you should know about like uh, softwares and the improvement hmm. uh for a fresher how can we improve business analytics basics for this field I mean, if someone is a fresher yeah so uh, basically for, as a fresher also like uh, you can uh, uh, take some small courses like there are a lot of courses available online so, so you can uh and free like a lot of free courses free videos are there on youtube right. so mm -hmm. you can go ahead and uh, learn some uh, basics of excel then uh, once you uh, learn basic basics of uh, excel then uh, practice it right. uh, download some dummy data and do some uh, like small analytics do some uh, uh, or like or even like once you have good uh, grasp of this thing then if you want to further if you get a uh, good interest in uh, business analytics then you can try to get a job in this domain itself like before mba or you can further enhance your knowledge by learning new softwares and all also like you can learn sql sql also you can learn so that you can pull data in your role and so this will basically uh this uh this will help in any mba like in whichever domain you will do mba in future oh. and all domains this sql and all would help and also uh, like if, if suppose you are do, uh, getting into supply, uh, like there is some chance that you can get into supply chain directly also without mba okay. while uh, by having this skills okay there is a question regarding neeti i have targeted neeti so what are the things that we should keep in mind that we uh, can make it in to neeti is there any like maybe two or three pointers you can give them so uh, pointers will be uh, mainly like uh, if you are like if you are a experienced person like uh, you have some uh, work experience professional work experience then uh, they will talk about your work experience so you should know it uh, like in and out what you have worked on and also overall like how the company was impacted by your work or like what the the dynamics market dynamics of your particular domain whatever domain you are working in and uh, then like it's not that they that you go and they uh, start asking supply chain questions right it's not like that but still if you have like if you suppose you are very uh, like uh very much inclined towards an e-commerce or supply chain role and if you have some kind of knowledge about it and in a way like a file explaining your current projects or your interests you can give a glimpse of that particular aspect ki ha i have read about this or i think we can do this in that uh, in this okay. particular way or something so it would help hmm. So uh, now, uh, just last question. So, how can an MBA help in boosting your career success in e-commerce supply chain management? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, because uh, like even without an MBA, also if people are uh, pursuing e-commerce supply chain, getting into supply chain, uh, with an MBA, how does it boost? See, so uh, there are two aspects. So one is like if I talk about I talk about Flipkart and others. So. Oh. uh they have well defined hiring processes oh. so uh, either uh, if suppose you are not from uh, not doing mba oh. so they hire uh, like um, uh, this uh, from iits and all 
So if you are from any IITs or any premier uh, in, uh, like uh, B Tech graduate, so they will directly uh, they uh, means you can get into any domain in at Flipkart, even supply chain or mm. any other thing. So then you don't need MBA. Mm. If you are not getting chance to get uh, directly, then you would uh, need an MBA to get into any uh, like e-commerce. But does it boost uh, an MBA? How does it boost uh, a career then? In so it, yeah, so basically how it uh, goes is like if you are a uh, if you don't have any uh, like uh, any background in e-commerce and supply chain, mm -hmm. so getting there uh, is very tough. Mm -hmm. Tough in the sense like uh, definitely they would hire someone who is uh, like in lateral hiring okay. if I talk about so if for lateral hiring they will uh, they will focus on someone who already has an ex uh, experience in the particular domain. Right. Okay. okay, so uh, either you have good experience in the same domain, okay. then you won't need an MBA degree okay. or uh, with whatever experience you have, if you can align it with supply chain and, and also like it depends on factors like if the job, how is the job market and how are you getting calls, how are right. if there are people who are referring you. So that those all would impact uh, uh, your chances of getting into any company. Okay. Okay. And definitely MBA boost because uh, like here you get placement. There are uh, like well defined placement processes. Companies come to your college and uh, there are uh, high chances that you may get shortlisted and you may uh, you may get a chance to work with them. Okay. All right. Okay, this is as much as uh, we can cover today. So um, before we wrap up, I would like to thank all of your attendees and our speaker, Vaibhav Gupta. Uh, this is Kalyani Majumdar from IMS Future U, wishing you a great weekend. Stay home and stay safe. Good day. Thanks, Vaibhav. Thank you. Thanks, Kalyani. It was great interacting and also answering all these very nice questions. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.